Greetings fellow humans, Bab Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. Today, we're taking a look at an interesting little kit. Um, it's a very affordable kit from Warmier to 65%. It's just soldered, but let's go ahead and check it out. Um, because at this price, I mean, for some people, this might be enough, but let's see. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what's in the box. So before taking a look at the keyboard, let's see what's included. We have some extra keys and a keycap puller that I suggest not using as that's likely to scratch keycaps. That's why it's uh, recommended not to use these plastic keycap pullers, but it does have a colorway similar to Newfie's. Mm, very nice. We have a pretty decent nylon braided USB-A to USB-C cable. And we have a user manual for the, all the key combinations and features that we have. And here we are with the Warmier V-K66. It's a 65%. And let's see what kind of switches it has on here. I believe they're red, but I don't quite recall. Yep, they are red switches. There is just a minimal amount of ping because as you can see, we have a PC plate. We have cherry profile keycaps. Oh, and they are double shot, which is quite nice. Uh, they're not perfect, but at this price, I think it's, I wanna say it's $30. I think I've seen it for less than that. Now let's see. Oh, wow. 1.6 millimeter thickness. That's that's pretty good. It's about top of the line, what you're going to get with a pre-built keyboard. Actually, I rarely see above 1.4, 1.5. So 1.6 is really nice for thickness of keycaps. They do feel like PBT, but I will have to look that up. Let's check out what the stabilizers look like. All right, the keycaps do have sub-legends for the extra functionality. That seems to be one of the light effects or switching through the light effects. And the... Oh, these are actually pretty well attached. They're a little loose, but not as loose as I've seen. Oh, that one's actually looser than I'd like. But let's see what it sounds like. Not bad. Oh, the space bar is actually quite nice. We have a case that, quite honestly, uh, reminds me a little bit of the uh, GMK67, um, as it has this right here. It just doesn't have a knob, but it seems very similar in construction. We do have a switch on the back for Windows and Mac mode. I personally prefer physical switches over key combinations because it's just, you know, you can check and see and you can put it in there. You don't act, have to worry about accidentally activating and changing it. Um, though I do know some keyboards have the indicator, which is also nice as well. And there's the USB-C port. We also have two sets of feet for a total of three typing angles. Now I actually want to check out change colorway so this I'm gonna do with what it belongs to I put it where it belongs all right I am going to this is kind of bugging me all these have a little plastic clear plastic protector over it but I just go ahead and take it off I I do plan to do a mod video uh, for this soon um, I'm gonna be painting a uh, GMK 67 and there's a couple of ideas that I have on how to basically ma match this to the rest of the uh, colorway and either cover up the lights or paint it to still leave the lights in place. But that's, that's going to be a little while before I get to it. Um, my oldest, my eldest is currently preparing for graduation. So there's just been a lot more work than I expected. That's why my video output has not been as high. I'm honestly surprised for the price. And there's the tiniest amount of ping 
This is the keyboard that I may come back to and actually replace. I've been getting these new hot swap sockets and these are actually pretty good. So I'm going to be doing a video on how to properly use those hot swap sockets, which are kind of like Milmax, but they're not. They're a little, they're new, they're different, but I want to kind of highlight the proper way and the easiest way actually to um, install those hot swap sockets so that you can turn your soldered board into a hot swappable board in case that's what you want to do. All right, let's do this one. Now, this one's the only one that kind of rattles and I'm trying to figure out why. I guess it's because it's loose because they are lubricated. Yeah. Now this one, at least we could lift this up and with a little bit of care, we could put a piece of tape there and actually allow it to lock a little bit better. But since uh, we're sticking to stock today, we'll just go ahead and leave it as is. Um, it is in place. See how much flex this has because that is a PC plate and it is gasket mounted. So if you're looking for something that's affordable, that's gasket mounted, um, that actually sounds pretty good with stock switches. I mean, it's not going to win any sound test contest, but it is a decent little keyboard for the price that it sells at. Let's plug it in and see what the lights look like. And there it is in all the RGB goodness. Now let's see, yep, that is the light effects. All right, we got it on a static one. So yeah, we have the north facing PCB and we do have that PC plate. Oh, it actually has some flex cuts in there. I can see right here. That's why we've got so much flex. Hmm. Now for the life of me, I can't figure out why they put the insert key above the delete key. Um, and they don't seem to have sub legends. So, you know, they just work as, as their own. Hmm. But I mean, other than that, we've got light brightness, function effect speed, switching out effects. We also have sub legends for Mac. So Mac users will be able to use this. Now it says they do have a Windows software for it. So I'm gonna take a quick look just to see what kind of functionality we have. All right, so I took a quick look at the software downloaded from X or warmierchannel.com. Um, it's pretty basic. The background shows a single blue light, so I'm guessing that there's a single blue light version of this, and that's probably why there isn't the ability to do per key RGB. Um, though I, when I usually see this version of the closed source software for keyboards, it usually does, but for some reason or another, it seems to be programmed only for the single light version, and that's why it doesn't have the per key, but I mean, even if you had a single light, if you want to do per key on only certain lights, you should be able to do it. Um, there is no function layer. So remapping is even if, if you say function, it's only going to give you certain different options. You can do a macro, but you can only rebind the keys. You cannot do function layers. I really need to stress to manufacturers out there including some sort of functionality. I'm going to guess that the MCUs in these keyboards have that ability, but for some reason you guys are skimping out on it. You really need to add that or just go easy and add UMK and Maya. And then all of the hard work and hard lifting is done for you. It literally takes, if, if the MCU is compatible, it literally will take you a day to write out the driver because all of the the framework, the skeleton, the the whole application for a firmware and an interface as Maya is all available to you. You really just have to put in the matrix and then do any uh, functionality for the RGBs. You can program, you can copy them from a lot of different uh, already pre-made templates. And it literally would take less than a day for anybody that knows even the most basic of C. Um, to put a QMK driver together. Now, uh, one of these days I am going to make a video on VIA 
as well as on how to do macros and how they can make your life easier. And I'm also going to do an overview of QMK. I'm going to try my best not to dig too deep down into the weeds as I'm a programmer myself. And But I want to just get give a high layer or a high level view of QMK so that more people can understand what's going on. Because a lot of people are like, do I need QMK? Do I need VIA? And I'll go over the reasons why I think it's important, even if you are using Windows or Mac OS and your keyboard, you know, offers that. I think VIA, um, QMK, ZMK, TMK, Vial, all of these open source firmwares are a better choice. And I wish that these keyboards, especially seeing that they're more affordable. I mean, this keyboard, even soldered as it is, a year ago would have been $70, $75, at least twice as much as what this sells for. But I've got to say, I mean, otherwise, I mean, if you don't need that extra functionality because you do have all of the function layers here with the function um, keys, that's why I know that the MCU has that ability because we have function keys. We also have home and print screen, screen lock, pause. So we have pretty much all the keys that would be, at, say, a TKL. You've got them on here. And as long as you get used to it, I mean, I already use this on a daily I would switch this and that. I would love to map page up, page down function layers to home and end, but I can't do that. But again, we are talking about a cheaper keyboard. Just the specs. Today, we took a look at the Wormier V-K66, a 65% wired keyboard from Wormier XVX. It includes basic Windows only driver software that has the most basic of features with key remapping and macro mapping. It is a gasket mounted PC plate with soldered Gixian red stock switches. It does have double shot PBT cherry profile keycaps that are 1.6 millimeter in thickness. The keyboard comes weighing in at 495 grams. The chin of the keyboard sits at 22 millimeters, while the back sits at 32 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of 8 degrees. Flipping out the first set of included feet will raise the back up to 38 millimeters and change the typing angle to 12 degrees. Flipping out the final set of feet will raise the back to 45 millimeters and provide for an angle of 16 degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $22.99 on Amazon and $39.99 on xvxchannel.com. For what it is, or at least what it's available for on Amazon, $23, there's just, <laughs> this beats so many, so many keyboards that were available even a year ago. Now, uh, one thing I did notice is that the wind light does not seem to work. So no matter what mode I'm in, that Windows light does not come on. So I don't know what's up with that, but at least we have a physical switch. Uh, I would like to see that. I mean, the caps locks work and it does have a lot of bleed. There's a little way to fix that, which is a video I'm also planning um, because there's light bleeds a lot on the ACO keyboards, especially the 5075. And I've got a fix for that that was actually posted by, I wanna say Updog on Budget Keeps. And I'm going to be doing a video of that in the near future. But anyway, I mean, for $22.99, this keyboard is not a bad entry into mechanical keyboards. I mean, if you really want to find out what mechanical keyboards are all about, but you're not willing to spend, you know, $150, $200 out of the gate, you know, to build yourself one, and you want to see what the big deal is all about, this is going to give you a pretty good feel for what a gasket mounted keyboard is going to deliver. I mean, obviously most other keyboards are going to have hot swap uh, functionality and this one doesn't. But again, the price of it is so low. Now it would be nice if there was a way to flash a QMK, a VIA, even if the fake VIA, but you know, that just doesn't exist. So today I'm gonna go ahead and leave you with a stock sound test of the V-K66 from Warmier XVX. Um, like I said, I think that this is a pretty good entry, um, especially like, hey, I've only had a full size uh, membrane. I don't know if I can deal with a smaller footprint or, you know, if I if I would like mechanical keyboards. 
So this one is going to give you a pretty good idea. I mean, yes, the switches are Jixian Reds, they're stock, um, but they're light enough. And it does have NKRO, so if you're going to game on this, I think you'll be fine. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test of the Warmier. Warmier, I, I know I'm probably saying it wrong, and please, Warmier, correct me if I'm saying it wrong so I can properly pronounce some names. I know they're just names that are made up. Some are easier to, than others to, to enunciate, but I just I just want to make sure that I'm pronouncing it the way that you guys want it to be pronounced. Anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed the review. As always, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions for me when I come back to this, please leave them down in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video, a thumbs up and a subscribe goes a long way. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.